How's it going? In today's tutorial, we're going to be making this render right here. It's all made in geometry nodes, but there is a big flaw in it that hopefully you guys can help me fix near the end of the video. The project file for this is available right now on Patreon. If you don't know about the Patreon, I just posted a big collection of tutorials over the past month. The Concert Visual Collection will teach you tons of tricks and techniques how to make better motion graphics. It's eight tutorials and two and a half hours of training. And the most recent collection takes you through five style frames that I made that will show you how to make really interesting, organic, natural looking renders. Every month, I post a big collection of tutorials. If you wanna check out the Patreon, it is linked in the description and you get a discount if you subscribe annually. With that being said, let's make this animation. All right, first let's go ahead and hit shift A and just throw a piece of geometry into this scene and we're gonna go to the geometry nodes workspace, click new and we're gonna go ahead and delete the input and throw in a quadratic bezier. So just type in quadratic bezier, plug it into here. We're gonna click and drag, type in zero and then it looks like maybe on the X, let's just extend this curve all the way out just like that and bring your resolution all the way to 256. And let's go ahead and displace this with a set position node. And we're gonna get a noise texture to set that position. So let's go ahead, click on normalize, use color into offset. We're gonna get a vector math node and set that to multiply so that we can adjust the strength of this effect. I'm gonna bring my detail to zero. 3D to 4D, and then we're just gonna bring that scale down until we get a really big shape that we can then use the multiply to make even bigger. So we have this now. Let's go ahead and create some geometry with a curve to mesh node. And then we'll get a circle for the mesh. So grab your curve circle and plug that into profile, and then we'll probably keep it somewhere around there, keeping the radius something like this, then we can go back and adjust the shape of the overall object. And this will be how our object is getting distributed. All right, so I'm gonna stick with this and we're gonna go on and convert this into a volume. So let's do a mesh to volume and make sure you, and make sure you click on fill caps, otherwise it's not gonna convert properly. And then let's do a distribute points in volume. This is where we can now throw in our geometry. So let's go ahead and get an instance on points and icosphere or UV sphere, which one you like, but honestly the icosphere is gonna be a little bit lighter on your system. And then you can bring up those subdivisions and now you have this. So I'm gonna go ahead and play with the density of the distribute points node. So just kind of massage it around until we get objects that are intersecting, but maybe not too many. So it looks like we can do something like this. Now let's go ahead and turn these into metaball looking actions, even though they're not technically metaballs. So what we have to do now is do another round of converting. So we're going to do a mesh to volume and then a volume to mesh. And then you can see how it's pretty much not working. It's still respecting it like intersecting spheres. You have to go ahead and realize the instances right after the instance on points. And now it is gonna give you the, those classic metaball looks. You can bring that voxel amount up to essentially subdivide it and a set shade smooth node to give it that final look. So you can bring that voxel up a little bit more and now we have metaballs. Of course, we don't have a way to animate this yet. So right after the distribute points in volume, we're gonna get a set position node and we're gonna get a noise texture accompanied by a vector math node, just like we did before. So plug color into vector, click on normalize and plug vector right into offset. And then of course, switch it over to multiply and just give it maybe a value of one for now. And then if you bring the detail to zero, 3D to 4D, you can now get these guys to animate. And if you want them moving in a more dramatic way, just bring up that multiply and they'll move even more dramatically. I'm bringing my scale to two and we get something like this. All right, so now we need to get some objects in the middle. So let's go here to wireframe and let's go right before the realize instances. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and du duplicate my instance on points, plug set position into points and we'll get another icosphere right here in instances. We're gonna get a join geometry and put it right before the set shade smooth and we'll just plug that right into there and we're gonna get some objects that we now have to go ahead and scale down so we get that really cool look that we're looking for and the W 
plays right into that. So now we have our meta balls playing together, doing something cool. Now what we can do here is let's bring the voxel amount, let's bring that voxel amount up on these objects so they subdivide a little bit more, which kind of glitches it around, but that's completely natural. And then if you go here to the modifiers, you can add a, a smooth node, and that is gonna take a little bit of that visual chaos and smooth it out. Click back on that, and now you have some interesting looking meta balls. Let's go ahead and now assign some materials. So I'm just gonna, all right, so I'm gonna highlight these guys, bring them over, and we're gonna get a set material node on each one of these guys. And right over here in the material box, we're gonna go ahead and get a new transmissive material and make it just a tiny bit of roughness, another material, make it solid black, and also just a tiny bit of roughness. Right here where you can see volume, 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 we'll just go ahead and make that the glass, and then this being the black material. And then I'm just gonna switch over to the shader editor so we can create our background gradient. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the tilde key, go to the front, I'm gonna hit shift A and get a camera. And then if I hit zero, I can just bring that camera out and then just move this guy right into the scene. Compositionally, I like to have some of them cut off just to make it look a little bit cooler. We're gonna go ahead and get in a plane. I'm gonna hit RX90, and then we're just gonna go ahead and bring it back a little bit, and then scale it to fit our scene, and then you can click the scale tool here and just bring it out like that. So now we have our background ready to be shaded, and we'll just hit Control A and apply that scale. So we're gonna go here to the render view, click on this background object, we'll click new, and then we can just go ahead and delete that, get a emission node, plug it here and then bring it up. And now we already have a really cool looking scene already. What we can do is get a color ramp, plug it, plug it here. We'll get in a, a gradient texture. And then what we need to do now is if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled, it comes with Blender by default, we'll hit Control T, use our object coordinate switch linear to B spline so we can get the smoothest gradient we can. And then right here on the X, just put 0 0.02. And then we can bring that over and now we'll have our gradient that we can go ahead and change to a nice orange. And then you can bring the strength up on it. And then you can say maybe 0 0.04 on the gradient, make it a little bit more aggressive. And now we have something cool. See these gray points? That's because our world is gray. We just want something like that to make it look cool. I'm going to switch back over to the Geometry Nodes Editor, and I'm gonna make the, the glass spheres, I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger, and then the spheres in the middle also just a little bit, actually I might keep them the same. I just wanted the glass portions to be a little bit more substantial. All right, we're near the end. Let's just go ahead and create a looping animation with the noise texture W here. So bring that to zero. We're gonna duplicate this. We're gonna get a mix color node, and then we'll just plug the color of each into here. Make sure these are exactly the same. And I'm gonna go ahead with my 250 frames. So let's go back to frame zero. In your preferences, make sure your default interpolation is linear. So we'll hit, we'll bring the factor over, hit I, hit I, go to the end, bring the factor over, and then we'll do maybe a strength of three, hit I, and then right here at the very end, we're gonna hit I on the, we're gonna hit I on the W, and then because we did positive three, we're gonna do a negative three, and we now have an animation. Now, I mentioned in the beginning, there is a major flaw with animation. If you render this out, and you subdivide it as much as you possibly can, like I did in this one, you're still gonna get this geometry flickering. And that's because this process isn't quite as stable as the sort of default metaballs, but default metaballs we can't use in geometry nodes. So this process is almost perfect. If we can remove that geometry flickering, this would be absolutely perfect and done, but I didn't want that to stop me from making this tutorial because I think this whole process is really valuable even if we're just making still images. But I know how the Blender community is, and if you guys know how to perfectly smooth this out so that we can actually render this and it look perfect, let me know in the comments. I am all ears for this, and we can come back and make another even cooler animation with this. But with all that being said, that's the end of the tutorial. That's how we can kind of recreate metaball actions in geometry nodes and make a really, really cool, even just a still frame, but hopefully we can animate it at some point too. So 
Thank you guys for watching. Again, if you want to check out all of those tutorials on my Patreon that is in the description, you can get a discount if you subscribe annually. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.